Greetings fellow travelers, just a handful of miles from the beautiful Naples Beach will come to the equally beautiful Naples Zoo. This 43 acre zoo started off as a personal botanical garden in 1919. Opened to the public in 1954 as the Caribbean Gardens with the introduction of waterfowl and parrots. In 1969, the park reopened with the introduction of exotic animals from Jungle Larry and Safari Jane's collection. In 2001, the zoo received its accreditation from the AZA and since then has cared for a growing number of critically endangered species and supports conservation efforts in the wild. In these videos, we will follow the loop around and see what the Naples Zoo has to offer. Here we come across our first viewing of Alligator Bay, home to the zoo's American alligators. This area is also home to many native species, including an annual rookery of herons. We'll get a better look at this exhibit in a later video. Around the corner, we enter Tiger Forest. This exhibit provides a naturalistic bamboo forest habitat for the zoo's resident Malayan tigers. Naples Zoo is a participating member of the AZA Species Survival Plan for the species. Here we learn that like most cats, tigers live alone. They keep their privacy by marking an area as their own by spraying strong smelling scents, scratching trees, and leaving piles of scat. In some mangrove forests, tigers will swim in search of prey. On land, tigers can run in short bursts of up to 40 miles per hour to hunt their preferred prey, deer. But tigers will catch anything from locusts up to buffalo many times their own weight. When hunting at night, their vision is six times better than ours. Their stripes help them hide by breaking up their outline. The pattern itself is unique like our fingerprints. Near Tiger Forest, we learn how Naples Zoo saves songbirds. The population of many of these birds have dropped by half or more since the 1960s. One factor to this is that tropical forests are being cut down to grow our coffee. Naples Zoo has recognized this early on that serving bird-friendly coffee helps to preserve viable quality habitat for migratory songbirds by rewarding farmers with premium prices to maintain a diverse shade canopy to their coffee farm. Always look for the bird-friendly sills to ensure your morning coffee helps birds, monkeys, and sloths. The paw prints in the pavement indicate they were getting ready for our first viewing into the Black Bear Hammock. Upon its opening, Black Bear Hammock is the largest black bear exhibit at an accredited zoo east of the Mississippi River. It is 50% larger than long-term AZA recommendations and 30 times larger than state requirements and consists of two separate habitats and one exhibit. One that simulates a natural environment and one that represents a backyard. Black Bear Hammock tells the story of the trains that helped log the ancient cypress forest in South Florida decades ago, as well as how to live with black bears in our neighborhoods today. Thematic elements like the trestle, the naturalistic cypress stumps and logs, the descending waterfalls and swamp, as well as the children's play structure and kiddie pool were also designed for the physical and mental benefit of the bears. In the north, black bears famously sweep away the cold winter months, a time when they can lose a quarter of their weight. Snoozing bears live off their body fat. To prepare, bears will increase their foraging to put on the needed pounds. Even though this dinning period may only last a few weeks here in Florida, bears can still be seen more often in the fall as they look for their food to get ready for the rest. We'll come back to the black bear hammock in a moment. For now, we will cross the pathway and come up to a multi-species exhibit housing Reeves and Moot Jack, yellow belly diker, and leopard tortoises. Though the leopard tortoise is a no-show, we did catch several glimpses of the others, like the Reeves Moot Jack, a thief with a matching bark and bite. Male Moot Jacks slash and jab with both antlers and sharp tusks to defend their territory, or to steal another Moot Jack's land. Although primarily plant eaters, Moot Jacks will also eat meat. Commonly, they find animals caught in trap or snares. People often do not mind this theft because a small deer can save their lives. When sensing danger, moot jacks bark to alert predators that they've been seen. This loud bark also notifies people that danger is nearby. Yellowback dikers will often follow a group of birds or monkeys feeding in the trees so it can eat the fruit that is accidentally dropped. Cutting back across the path, we get a side view of black bear hammock and learn that a hammock is a slightly elevated area that frequently grows hardwood trees and is surrounded by wetlands or moist or pinelands. We'll also get a great view of the trestle bridge feature before making our way back across the path and visiting the fossas of Madagascar exhibit. Here we learn that Madagascar offers a stunning variety of life or biodiversity. Like a world of its own, more than 80% of its plants and animals live nowhere else on our planet. Here we'll find two of those species, like the rarely seen in North American zoo, white-fronted brown lemur. 
The male of the species gives this lemur its name, while females like the one living here lack the white around their face. All of Madagascar is lemurs at risk, and 17 species have gone extinct since people arrived 2,000 years ago. Naples Zoo serves as international headquarters for the Madagascar Fauna and Flora Group. If we turn around, we get one more glimpse into the multi-species moot jack and diker exhibit. Heading back to the second of the fossils of Madagascar exhibit, we find that these carnivores are the largest living mammals native to the island of Madagascar. Semi-tractable claws and flexible ankles allow fossils to move as easy as squirrels in the trees. Including running headfirst down tree trunks, their tail is about the half the length of their body and it helps them balance as they move along the branches. During the 1940s and 1950s, 40 car trains hauled 350 million board feet of cypress wood out of South Florida 915 trips. That was enough cypress to circle the globe more than two and a half times in one inch thick by 12 inch wide planks. This was a devastating blow to the bear's habitat. And here we're also told that a fed bear is a dead bear. The single most important thing we can do to keep people and bears safe is to keep garbage in a secure location or bear resistant containers. Bears can be lured from over a mile away by the smell of our trash and our greasy grills. This can create a risk to people, pets, and bears. As we make our way around Black Bear Hammock, we'll come across the coyote. These clever canines can cover country. As members of the dog family, coyotes are among the continent's most adaptable animals. They will eat anything from berries to deer fawns, and by expanding their diets to our garbage, the fallen fruit in our yards, and even our pets, they can thrive in our cities. In fact, the coyotes you see here were found orphaned at a closed historical hotel in Florida. As people killed off wolves and altered habitats, coyotes expanded their range. These highly adaptable species have been seen everywhere from dodging taxis in New York City to stalking cats in suburban Florida. Here we'll get one final view into the black bear hammock and learn that Anna had a rough start to life. She lived for years in a 10 by 10 concrete cage in a South Carolina backyard. When the owner died, their future was at risk until Naples Zoo sent their veterinarian to rescue her. Through a small path, we come to our next shared exhibit for a reticulated and Burmese python. Reticulated pythons are the world's longest snakes. Armed with over 100 teeth, these pythons strike at animals from birds to larger mammals. Like other pythons, they do not have venom, but use a record holding long coils to suffocate, not crush their prey. With lower jaw bones that can separate, they spread apart their mouth to swallow mills up to 132 pounds. While some snakes slither quite rapidly, Burmese pythons slowly crawl by essentially walking with their ribs. But since they do not chase their prey, only striking speed is needed by this well camouflaged ambush predator, which can swallow animals larger than itself like deer. Down the path we will come to the Florida panther. These solitary hunters are most active around dawn and dusk when they look for food like furrow pigs, armadillos, deer, raccoon, and other small animals. They will also eat calves, goats, and other domesticated animals. While they cannot roar, they do purr and even whistle and chirp. They also make a distinctive yaw. Naples Zoo resident Florida panther is Athena. In June of 2017, Big Cypress National Preserve biologist noted a radio collared mother panther had moved three of her two week old kittens, but had left one at the original den site. After an unfruitful attempt to reunite the kitten, she was removed from the wild. As panther kittens need to live with their mother about six months to be successfully reintroduced into the wild, Naples Zoo agreed to provide Athena a permanent home. Next time we come back to Naples Zoo, we'll pick right up where we left off and continue our trek around the loop. Thank you for joining me. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.